Welcome back to Flat Irons Tuning. We're here in the shop. It is finally time to, to take a look at these fancy oil filters. Uh, for this video, we're going to be cutting open the Cusco oil filter, JDM Pink STI oil filter, Ready oil filter, and the HKS oil filter. And yeah, spoilers, we, we've already cut this one open. Uh, got a little excited before we started recording. Um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a look at all of these, compare them to all the filters we've cut open in the past, see what differences we can find, compare and contrast, see what we can learn, and, uh, and we're just going to go from there. So. Before we dive into it all, I wanted to say that this video is brought to you by the uh, Toki Rookie STI oil filter. The content that we put out with these filters, we're still hearing a lot of people say that these are hard to find. You can order them through the Flatirons Tuning website. We've always got them on hand. We've got them at a really good price. And, uh, you know, if, if you go to the Flatirons Tuning website or order them, uh, that supports us. That helps us keep, keep the lights on, keep coming back to make this content for you. So we greatly appreciate that. Um, all right, and without any further ado, Let's, let's dive into these guys, let's cut them open, and let's see what we can learn. Whoa. Whoa. We've got them all opened up, we've taken a look at all of them. We found a lot of interesting things. Um, you know, with the first group of filters that we looked at, you know, the, the Subaru Temporary Filter, the Tokyo Rookie Filter, the Roger Clark Filter, they were all fairly similar. There was not a lot of surprises there. What was really interesting going with this grouping, the you know the more I guess high-end filters, um, was that there was a, there was actually a lot more difference here and a lot more uh, variability than than with that initial group, and to, to a certain extent that was that was actually a surprise in and of itself. Um, one of the things that we found that is just worth noting is that the cans for all four of these filters they all had some level of you know corrosion or or, or something like that. In them, which was which was odd. They they came from different suppliers. They came at different times. We didn't order them all from the same place, um, but they all had kind of various levels of corrosion. I don't know what that's from. I don't know if it was like if they spent a long time at sea in a, in a container or something like that. It's just strange. Probably doesn't matter, um, but it's just weird because all the other cans that we've seen are basically pretty crisp and clean. Um, you can see from the filter media and the color of the filter media that. Uh, the STI, the Cusco, and the HKS, they all look very much the same. We put them under the microscope, they all look the same as far as we can tell. Uh, Grady here is the, is the outlier. Um, the length is all the same between these three. The Grady is shorter. The Grady is shorter by about, call it like uh, 8 or 10 inches compared to these others. Um, when we put it under the microscope and look, so we can, we can shine a light from the bottom, we can shine a light from the top. These all under the microscope look the same. There's all little pockets of light that come through these filters, uh, this, this filter media. The, the Grady filter media did not let as much light in. Um, looked at the Roger Clark filter media as well, and it also seemed to be kind of similar to Grady in that it just doesn't let a lot of light through. So it seems like maybe it's a little, a little finer. Um, in, it's hard to get any information and numbers out of these manufacturers, but looking around at, at the HKS did find reference to their filter that it's a 20 micron filter. So take that for whatever it's worth. It's interesting to note. Um, the center section designs are a lot of similars, except for this HKS one. You can see the HKS one is very, very open. It's got their this honeycomb design, which is really interesting. Um, the uh, the Gretty looks almost identical to the Tokyo Roki. Um, and then, you know, the JDM STI and the Cusco are very similar, similar size openings of holes and such. Um, Roger Clark has a unique pattern, very dense amount of holes and very high number of holes. It's the most holes of any of these, um, which is just interesting. And then when we, when we actually started to measure the pressure on the relief valve, that's where it got really wild. So I actually put that together in a, in a graph for you. Um, because this is made by Subaru and kind of like this is the kind of the accepted to be the, like the best, the standard, what have you, I benchmarked the, the Tokyo Roki STI filter. Um, what's interesting is the highest relief valve pressure that we found was the, was the super temporary filter. And then in this grouping, they all varied from, from the Tokyo Roki. And it's really interesting to see how much softer the relief valve spring is in, in this grouping. Um, you've got the, the STI, the, uh, sorry, the Roger Clark, the STI, and the HKS, they're all in the same ballpark. Um, of about you know 40 percent, 45 percent softer than than the Tokiroki, and then you've got the Cusco and the Gretti, which are softer still, They're like 60 percent softer, which is really interesting. Now the question that we have, which is probably the question that you have, which is what does all of this mean? 
Right off the bat, I would say like the two criteria that I would want to see if I, if I have a filter that I've been using and I want to put on a new filter is it would come down to oil pressure data and in oil analysis. What I'd want to see is, okay, if I put on a new filter, I am getting the same or as close to the same of oil pressure in the engine through the full range of, of use and performance of the engine that I'm using the car with, with the new filter as with, as with the old filter. You know, I think it's safe to say, like, if I handed you this filter and said, hey, you can put this on your car, but you're going to lose five, pressure, five PSI of oil pressure across the board, well, then that's, that's not a great option. That's not, that's not a selling point for the filter. So you'd want to see similar performance across the, the RPM range, um, you know, across the power band that you're using. And then the second thing is, you know, whatever your oil change interval is, you're going to want to see that your, your oil is getting filtered as well with the new filter, at least, if not better, than it was with the old filter. So filter media comes in here, but I think the build of the filters and the flow of the filter is the real is the really key and important part. Um, again, I think the Tokyo Roki filter is a good baseline because it was standard on these cars for so many years. Um, Subaru really knows what they're doing as far as designing this, it seems like. And so then if these filters or if any of the other filters would perform better, then that's where it'd be better. But the other thing that I that I take away from all of this is that I think that how you, how you use the engine, how you drive the car, is a really big piece of um, the puzzle when it comes to which filter is right for you. And this relates in part to relief valve pressure. What was really interesting is seeing that the Roger Clark was a little bit less than Tokiroki, but then so was the STI, and then you get into like the Cusco and the Gretti, and they're, they're lower still. The relief valve, under most normal operation of the car, it should only, it should really rarely open it, and if it does open, it should only open when you know, you're, you're starting from cold, when, when the oil is really thick, when you're having really high oil pressure, because that's when, that's when you actually need the relief valve to open, because you want that oil to just get into the engine at that point. Um, but, you know, for high RPM, high volume situations, you know, it, it, for a track car, it's one of those things where if the relief valve would open to ensure that you, you're getting the oil to the engine and oil pressure to the engine, in some cases that's better than the relief valve not opening and causing a little bit more of a pressure drop and forcing the oil through the filter. And there's a factor there too where change interval comes into play. Um, you know, if you're, if you're having a lower relief valve pressure, which means that more oil is going to skip the filter and get into the engine, well, if you're changing, you know, if you, if you put in fresh oil for a track day and then you're changing the oil after the track day, the filtration is probably not nearly as critical as it would be if you're trying to go, say, three, 5,000 miles between changes. I mean, the ultimate validation in, in the lower relief valve pressure to me is this STI, STI filter. I mean, su certainly Subaru did that for a reason. You know, they say that it's more of a motorsports filter so that I can, I can see I can see where in, in a track use, motorsports use application, where that would be more ideal. Um, and then ultimately, like the design of these, I think, you know, a design considering the flow rate. You know, how, how well does the filter perform at a really high rate of flow of oil is critical. We know from the data that we have from Roger Clark, because they benchmarked it against the Tokiroki, that their filter improves and, and flows better at higher volume than the Tokiroki does. Because, you know, if, if they're running it on a motor, for most parts application on a race car, they know that it's going to be spending a lot of time in the, that upper RPM range. That, that high, high volume performance is important. That's why they designed this filter to beat this benchmark of the Tokyo Road. And it, and it does. So, and then looking at the filter media, I mean, it seemed, what it, what it, what it comes back to me, what it all comes back to me is that Again, for, for daily driven car, street driven car, this Tokyo Roki filter is fine. It's great. It, it's, I think it is better than, than the readily available Subaru OEM ones here. Um, but this is a great filter, and, and we've, we've tracked our cars with this filter. We've had no issues. I think it's a solid, solid option. Everything for me keeps pointing back to this Roger Clark filter because it was benchmarked against the Tokyo Roki. It outperforms it. It outflows it. The, the filter media from everything that we've seen is really good. It actually is a mirror of the JDM STI filter in, in terms of a lot of a lot of factors. Um, 
Filter meat, I think, is, is similar, maybe even slightly better on the Roger Clark, just looking at them side by side with the light going from the bottom through. Um, it looks like the filter media is a little bit more consistent with the Roger Clark compared to the JDM STI. I, that's that's just you know speculation, I suppose. Um, the fact that it has basically the same relief valve pressure as this filter compared to the Tokiroki, um, I think that's good. And just just all of the design factors that go into this uh, this filter. The STI filter, I'm sure, is is a very solid, very well designed filter. It's just it's a little bit on the expensive side. At fifty dollars, forty five, fifty dollars, that's a lot for an oil filter. Um, the one that I was surprised by was this HKS. Figure, you know, it's got very similar filter media, it's the same relief valve pressure. I really like this open um, center chamber design. Right? So, like, the, the only restriction for a high, from a high volume standpoint uh, is going to be the filter media itself. Like, the, the center support is not really going to propose any kind of uh, restriction, whereas there's going to be a little bit of restriction that any one of these three would, would pose at a very high volume flow rate through this filter. Um, I mean, the, I would definitely say that these are my favorites. I, you know, daily driven car, I would say Tokiroki, track car, Roger Clark, you know, fancy, fancy daily driven car, maybe the Roger Clark. And if I was going to try something else, it would probably be HKS or STI, but just because the HKS is half the cost of the SA filter and it, it's got a lot of stuff going for it, I would probably do this one. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of my takeaway with these filters and, and what all this means. It's just, it's really interesting now, now to see what what some of the variables are. How how much how many differences there are, how many variables that there are at this higher end with these filters. Um, but I think those are the key takeaways. At least those are the key takeaways for me. So hopefully that's helpful. If if you think one of these other filters is better, or or if you have other impressions, definitely would like to hear it and see it in the comments. So leave a comment below. And again, all these filters are available on FlatironsTuning.com. We greatly appreciate your support there. That's what helps us keep coming back and making these videos. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.